Amanda from Ponte's Books here with another video for chapter four from The Prince and the Pauper. Today we're looking at another fun fact. And today's fun fact deals with um, the part of the story where Edward has now officially kind of switched places with Tom. He's wearing Tom's clothes, he's out in the real world, and everyone's making fun of him, uh, and they're chasing him basically away from the palace. And then finally the crowd leaves him alone, but he's left not really knowing where he is. And he looks around him and he's like, oh, this looks familiar. This is a church that my father turned into an orphanage. So these boys are going to be very helpful uh, in helping me to get back home. And then it turns out that they're, they're really not. Um, and so he's hoping that they're going to help him, but they actually end up beating him up. But as he's walking away and reflecting on the situation, he realizes, wait a minute, I have the control. I'm the prince someday going to be the king. And I think the reason these boys were so cruel to me was because they only had food uh, and shelter in this orphanage and they didn't have an education and that would make them um, treat me better. So basically, uh, he's implying that an education would help them to empathize with him more and be kinder. So that's what we're looking at today, gaining empathy through learning. So I kind of already summarized it, but this is kind of the part of the story where Edward is reflecting and he says, and now and then his mind reverted to his treatment by those rude Christ hospital boys. And he said, when I am king, they shall not have bread and shelter only, but also teachings out of books. For a full belly is little worth where the mind is starved and the heart. And I skipped a little bit. For learning softeneth the heart and breedeth gentleness and charity. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't really find anything specifically that just said like, learning makes you nicer. It was never anything so specific as that. Um, but what I kind of focused in on is just this idea of empathy and how we gain empathy and different recommendations that people had and how that can connect to um, learning that could happen in school. So let's start with what is empathy? Empathy is understanding how others feel and being compassionate towards them. So kind of putting yourself in their shoes so you're not just like, oh, I feel bad for you. It's like, oh, I feel how you're feeling. Like you feel sad and I feel sad with you. So how do we develop empathy? Um, so this list in particular is from a New York Times article, um, but there's a number of different lists that have been put together through lots of different resources. And some of these common elements show up on uh, those different lists, uh, but some of them vary from one to one. But in this list in particular, they said uh, that you should practice empathy, meaning that you should have conversations with people who have different backgrounds from yourself. You should purposely put yourself into situations that kind of put you in other people's shoes. Um, you should also admit that you're biased. So kind of check your privilege and realize what is your background uh, and what privileges have come along with that and admit that that has caused you to be biased, you know, for or against certain things. Uh, and then that doesn't make you a bad person, but that's just the way it is. Um, another thing is to stand up for others. So to actually take action and to donate or to um, go out to events that are raising awareness for different, you know, life situations, again, that are different from your own. Number four is one of the big ones that I'm going to hit on a little bit more uh, in just a bit here. Read books. Reading both fiction and nonfiction books um, really help to develop that empathy. Like I said, I'll go into that one a little bit more raise empathetic kids. So then the idea is that if one generation is working to um, build up their empathy, then you also want to raise your children to be even better than you were. Uh, and again, one of the ways that it recommends doing this is reading uh, and using that to help encourage kids to feel empathy. Um, and also just engaging in hard conversations. So there are a lot of challenging conversations that have been happening uh, in the world recently and in, you know, all throughout history. And so just not being afraid to enter into those conversations and talk to people about things that might make you uncomfortable. Courageous conversations is what you hear a lot of times. Um, all of those things together can be good steps to develop empathy. 
So how does reading in particular help to develop empathy? So again, bringing it back to this example with Edward, he talked about school and how that can really help to softeneth the heart, as he said. So again, I didn't really have um, specifically looking at different subjects uh, and looking at like, how does history do that? How does math do that? But the idea in general is that um, learning from books is what he said in his quote. Uh, and I'm focusing particularly in on reading literature and nonfiction. So that can encompass a lot of different things that happen in school. So how does reading help to develop empathy? So it introduces us to people's lives from different backgrounds. So that can be both fiction and nonfiction. So you're literally learning about a people that you have never heard about before that opens up your horizon. So that increases our capacity to empathize just because we are understanding more the history uh, and more just about people who are different from ourselves. And then books, especially fiction books, um, but nonfiction as well can take us even a step further where we can actually look into the characters' lives and minds, especially those first person books. So The Prince of the Popper is third person, but first person is when you're seeing through the eyes of the character. That really increases our capacity to understand other people's thoughts and feelings because you're seeing the story through that character's eyes and you're experiencing things as they're experiencing it. And that really helps to develop empathy especially with younger kids. So, but this is something that they uh, show can still be effective with adults. Adults can, if they actively try and increase their empathy, um, then they totally, it, it is possible to do if you make a specific effort to do so. But with kids in particular, if you're trying to raise them to be empathetic, either in school or at home, books are a great way to do that. So a couple of references just here um, that, like I said, that New York Times article that I referenced. Um, but really, I think it's really wise of Edward to realize that these boys aren't being cruel because they are just cruel at heart and they can't change. They're just lacking some empathy. And he has kind of just the ability to realize that maybe learning can help to increase their empathy. And so if a situation would arise similar to what happened to him someday in the future, that the boys would respond differently. All right, that's all for today. Have a good day.